Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in this, the second episode of Epic Emulation Updates, we're going to be taking a look at four brand new updates for four emulators that I cover on the channel. We're going to be taking a look at CMU, the Wii U emulator, Yuzu, the Nintendo Switch emulator, Citra, the 3DS emulator, and we're also going to be taking a look at a brand new update for Xenia, an emulator for the Xbox 360. There is an absolute ton of information contained in all of these new updates, so let's jump straight in and get this video started. Firstly, we're going to be taking a look at CMU emulator, where we have seen an absolutely enormous update to a graphics pack that pretty much every single user of this emulator is going to have used and be aware of. FPS++ is the graphics pack of which I speak, and if you're not aware of what it does, it basically allows Breath of the Wild to be played at a dynamic frame rate, not a static one like the stock game is set to. This basically will mean that if you are playing the game and your frame rate is only around 15 or 16 frames per second, you will still have 100% or 1x game speed. It is also due to this dynamic nature of this graphics pack that has allowed us to play Breath of the Wild at frame rates that go past 30 frames per second, allowing many of CMU's users to play back this awesome game at 60 frames per second, like it seems like it was always intended to be. Unfortunately, with this dynamic uncapping of the frame rate, this also brought with it some issues. One of these issues was solved only two days ago. This issue was the arrow drop, which was caused by heavier physics due to the doubling of frame rate at 60 frames per second. However, one of the most major issues of this FPS++ graphics pack has now been solved by its original creator, Zalfanos, who has himself released basically an FPS++ version 2.0. To demonstrate exactly what this FPS++ version is going to fix, let's take a look at this clip right here, where you're going to see that at any point in gameplay where your frame rate is not an absolutely perfect 60 frames per second with an absolutely perfect frame time, you are going to get these horribly jumpy animations. Not only is this new FPS++ 2.0 version going to fix all of these broken animations, but according to user reports, it is also giving a much much better performance and much more fluid gameplay. When we add on top of all of these new changes the fact that they have also completely fixed any of the arrow drop issues from this graphics pack, this FPS++ version looks like it's going to have a very very bright future and a very large user base. You can download this brand new FPS++ version 2.0 from the description of this video right now. As always, massive thanks goes to the original creator of FPS++ Zalfinos. Moving away from CMU emulator for now, let's take a look at yet another Nintendo platform emulator. Let's take a look at Yuzu. For this segment of the video, we're going to be taking a look at one, some changes that are already in Yuzu Canary and available for you to use right now, and we're going to be taking a look at another very experimental PR that unfortunately, at least at this point in time, is not yet ready to be merged into Yuzu Canary. By showing you this experimental PR though, I hope to give you some kind of insight into exactly how emulators are developed and how developers of these emulators need to overcome the bugs that they may encounter. So as you may have noticed in the gameplay that I am speeding up at the moment by the way, we have seen much better performance in Super Mario Odyssey and many other games on this emulator. However, one of the biggest visual improvements is how they render any of the transparent or water textures in this game. As you can see, this is no longer a flat black texture and is now fully transparent exactly like it should be. Unfortunately, at this point in time at least, there is no physics interaction still between character models and the water. What should be happening is a very similar reaction to what you can see when this pillar jumps up out of the water. Now, in order to show you some of the bugs and graphical issues that this experimental PR of which I spoke fixes, we're going to have to take a quick trip to the very top of Cap Tower. In the very latest Canary version of Yuzu Emulator, you are going to see that while yes, the flame effects atop these cap lanterns do in fact render. 
Unfortunately, at this point in time, they only render at certain angles and there are actually dozens of effects in many games that exhibit exactly this kind of rendering bug. Another example I can give you is this rainbow trail that appears behind Cappy. While you can see that yes, it renders when your camera is directly above Mario, when you put your camera down here, this effect is completely broken, very similarly to these flame effects. Another fairly significant bug, at least right here in Cap Kingdom, is very, very apparent when you come out into this area or when you look at any of the ground textures when your character model stops moving. You can see exactly what I'm talking about when I stop moving right here and look at the exterior of Cap Tower. It has this really weird flickering effect that is very, very hard on the eyes if you're playing in this area for an extended period of time. Now let's take a look at this experimental PR which was made by one of the main developers of Yuzu, Blinkhawk. You can now see that while yes we have many many graphical bugs, the two most major ones we have is this weird stretching of the ground textures and we also have another bug that you will most likely have noticed when you move your camera, it seems to slightly darken the game's visuals. However, when using this experimental PR or experimental update for Yuzu Canary, you can see that these textures and these effects on these flame lanterns are now correctly being rendered. In a very similar fashion, you can also see that when you do a Cappy cap throw, the rainbow trail effect behind Cappy is perfectly rendered regardless of which angle you view it from. Now, these are only two of probably, I would say, about three dozen effects that are fixed with the utilization of this PR. Another one we're going to see is going to be immediately apparent when we exit to the exterior of Cap Tower. Before, we had this horrible flickering and flashing motion on all of these ground and wall textures, whereas right now, you can very clearly see that all of this flashing and flickering has been completely fixed with the utilization of this work in progress update. One of the most major graphical fixes is seen right here in Seaside Kingdom, where not only the water is now rendered perfectly, but also these jets coming up out of the ground are now being rendered for the very first time correctly on a Yuzu emulator. As I already said guys, there's probably three or four dozen both major and minor graphical effects now fixed with the utilization of this work in progress update. If I was to sit here and show you every single one of them that I have found, this video would probably be about two hours long. I'm just going to show you one more major fix which actually makes the area look absolutely breathtaking. You can see right here in a lakeside kingdom with the fixed transparency to water and with all of these brand new rendered effects, this just makes the game look absolutely amazing. Massive praise and thanks really must be given to every single developer of this Switch emulator. The speed at which they are providing us these updates is absolutely crazy and it really just makes makes it one of the most exciting emulators to watch ever. Okay, so moving away from Nintendo emulation just for a few minutes at least, let's take a look at Xenia, an emulator for the Xbox 360. This is yet another modern emulator that has come on absolute leaps and bounds, especially so in the last two or three months. In this latest update, they have added the ability for the emulator to use tessellation. To be honest, when I heard that they had added this tessellation update, I wasn't too hyped until I actually loaded into a few of my games and saw all of the new effects that are now rendering. Previously, in all older Xenia versions, none of this water was rendered at all. It actually kind of blew my mind just a little bit when I loaded into the very first level of Halo 3 and saw just how much of a visual impact all of this new rendered water was having on the levels. Not only is Halo 3 seeing significant updates to its playability, as I covered in my previous video only last week, Halo 4 has now seen some fairly significant progress. Where previously, last week, it was only able to go into its menus, the game is now able to progress in-game and runs at an almost perfectly locked 30 frames per second. Now, there are some very, very funny rendering and physics bugs happening in Halo 4 on Xenia at this point in time. This bug right here, which I have affectionately dubbed Spaghetti Legs, is actually a CPU-based issue and at this point in time happens pretty much every time your character comes to a stand still. Basically what is happening is every single ragdoll in the game, at least right now, is completely broken and not working as it should. 
Bugs like this though are generally expected, especially so when games are booting for the very first time and I have absolutely no doubt that the developers over at Xenia are going to have it fixed in no time at all. As with any of the emulators I've covered in this video, I'll have links to all of their respective discords linked down in this video's description. So last but certainly not least, let's take a look at yet another Nintendo emulator. Let's take a look at Citra, the emulator for the Nintendo 3DS. For anybody who saw the last episode of Epic Emulation Updates, you will already be aware of the fact that Pokemon X, Pokemon Y and tons of other games are now fully playable or considered very playable on this 3DS emulator due to a brand new LLE audio subsystem. Due to this brand new LLE subsystem for the audio, they were able to completely rewrite the HLE or fast audio core systems of Citra emulator and due to these brand new updates, you are now going to be able to play Pokemon X and Y at full speed. You can even see that when I pause my game, come into this emulation tab, come down to configure and come to my systems tab, when I come across to audio you can see I am indeed using the HLE or fast audio subsystem. You can also see that when I unlimit my frame rate, I am getting well over the 30 frames per second cap of this game, generally staying anywhere between around 110 and 120 frames per second. This of course means that you are going to be able to play this game fully and completely on much much lower end systems than my own. For anybody who wants to find out exactly how to use this brand new update, I will link in the description of this video the blog post that the developers of Citra themselves have released. In that blog post, you will find out all of the information that you need in order to get this brand new Citra Canary version up and running using audio and with the best possible game performance. As I've already said guys, if you need any additional help, I'll not only link all of the Discord servers for all of these emulators, but I'll also have the link to the BSOD Gaming official Discord linked down in the description, so do not be afraid to join that Discord and ask any questions you could possibly have. Hopefully you guys are going to be just as hyped to use all of these new emulator updates as I was to make this video covering them. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.